تعينه ونستغفره واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما واشهد ان سيدنا وامامنا وحبيبنا وقائدنا رسول الله محمد صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحبه الطيبين الاطهار صلاه وسلاما يليقان بمقام سيد الانبياء وامام المرسلين صلى الله عليه وسلم رسول الله نور لا يضاهى يفوق الشمس في اجل ضحاها فلا يقضوا اذا ما الشمس غابت ولا القمر المنير اذا اضاء فيا بدر الاله لنا تجلى ويا نور السعادة في أجل ضحاها تعالى الله تعالى الله أهدانا نبيا وأكرمنا بخير الخلق محمد صلت عليك ملائك الرحمن أبا الزهراء أبا الزهراء قد جاوزت قدري بمنحك بيد أن لي انتسابا فما عرف البلاغة ذو بيان إذا لم يتخذك له كتابا صلوات ربي وسلامه عليك سيدي أبا القاسم يا رسول الله ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله تعالى وخير الهدي حي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى our creator, the sustainer, the provider, the cherisher, the one who created us to show our submission and our surrender to him. That's why I bear witness openly and testify that there is no God worthy of our worship except Him, Allah. Glory be to Him. And I bear witness openly, and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah, the best of His creation, the one that Allah had sent Him with the guidance. And we are sending our blessings and our salutations to all the prophets and the messengers of Allah and of course we believe in all of them without any distinction. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather all of us with his prophets and the messengers starting Adam all the way down to Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, all the prophets and the messengers of Allah till we reach to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers and sisters, welcome back to another Jumu'ah and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided us to attend another Jumu'ah. Without His guidance, we cannot do anything without Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why we say always, مَنْ يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُهْتَدِ وَمَنْ يُطْلِهِ فَلَنْ تَجِدَ لَهُ وَلِيَّ مُرْشِدًا Whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide him. And whomsoever will be astray, no one will bring him back to the guidance except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why, let me give you the glad tidings, the good news at the beginning of this Jum'ah. You came here, alhamdulillah. You drove to the masjid. And let me tell you something. You will leave the masjid after a few minutes with four 
four things. Number one, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَجَتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بِيُوتِ اللَّهِ No one gathering will be together in the house of Allah to study, to analyze, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to pray in the masjid, except they will go for with four things. Number one, they will get the mercy of Allah. We will be showered by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, Allah will mention our names in His group, the group of the angels, the group of the righteous, the group of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three, they will get the sakina, the tuhanina, they will get the peaceful mind, they will get the inner peace. And also, illa ghashiyatuhum ar-rahma wa sakina wa dhakarahum Allahu fi man inda and wa hafatuhum al-malaika. Number four, they will be surrounded by the angels of Allah subhanahu wa taala. May Allah grant us the blessings of Jumaa. I want you to say Amin. And one of the things that I wanted to share with you, it's a beautiful day because for for many reasons. Because actually it is Jum'ah, it is the time that we are hoping for the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We came thrilling to get the mercy of Allah. And also, it is a special day because it is the time that we talk about the birth of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Known as Milad al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course, we do not remember Rasulullah just once a year, but always we, we remember Rasulullah. We extract the teachings and the lessons from the statements of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's our Rasul. He's our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us his intercession on the day of judgment. Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil alameen. When we talk about the birth of Rasulullah, lots of lessons, lots of, you know, wisdom that we can learn today from the birth of Rasulullah. And, and the main lesson that we need to know and understand and apply that in our life, how the destiny of Allah works. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts things together. And sometimes you might be like 10 years ago, you lost a job, or you had a loss in your business, or you traveled somewhere, or you changed the state, and it looks for you at that time that was a bad decision, or it was a bad destiny, it was a calamity that you discovered by yourself after 10 years that Allah wanted good for you. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had planned things in such an amazing way. If Allah will give you the ability to put the plan by yourself for your life, you might damage your life. And that happened exactly with Rasulullah. Not only with Rasulullah, but also with the family of Rasulullah. And how Allah put things together. Let me start with the hadith of, of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, and that is authentic hadith. He said, Anabnu I am the, the son of the two persons who are about to be slaughtered. And he is referring here to Sayyiduna Ismail and to his own father. Abdullah. And all of us, we know the story of Ismail alayhi salam. And what happened with his father, Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam. But what about the father of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? His grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, had made an oath. And you might find it strange nowadays. But that is what happened. He made an oath, and of course that was before Islam. So we are not debating here about whether it is halal or haram, but it is a historical point of view that it was a tradition, it was a custom at that time. He made an oath, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would grant him 10 children, he will slaughter one of them for the sake of Allah 
to thank him. He will slaughter one of them just to, to show the gratitude. And once he was granted the ten children, he wanted to fulfill the oath. And they wanted to draw lots, which one is going to be slaughtered. And for many times, the lots will come to the name of Abdullah. Eventually, he will be the father of the Prophet Muhammad But he had too much love for Abdullah. And he asked the scholars around him, and they said, Instead of that, for every lot, you have to slaughter 10 camels instead of slaughtering Abdullah. And that ended by 10 lots. Every time when they draw lots, they choose the name of Abdullah. So 10 multiplied by 10, that means 100 camels will be slaughtered on the name of Abdullah as a sacrifice. So he said, I am the son of the, of, the, of the man who was about to be slaughtered. And instead of that, they slaughtered 100 camels. And they distributed the, the meat for the poor and needy in the whole city. And after two, three months from that incident, what happened? His father, so that Abdullah is brilliant and he had something different than anyone else. He was genius, smart, eloquent in the speech. So he wanted to teach him how to be a good merchant. And he taught him the skills. And when he reached to the age of 25, he proposed Amina for him. He wanted his son to be married. And actually, that is what happened. In fact, Abdullah, the father of, of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had married Amina, and Amina bin Tuwan. And she was one of the, the, from one of the noble families in Mecca at that time. And they got married. But he didn't stay a lot, few days, and the time for the business came. He has to travel to Syria, to Asham, for his business, for his work. And he traveled there. He stayed like two, three months. He didn't know that his wife got pregnant. And who is the child? Who is the baby? Who, who is the fetus at that time? It was Rasulullah Muhammad. Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then when the caravan came back, he stopped to their uncles and family relatives close to Al Medina. It is called Bani Najjar. He stayed there and he got sick and he died there. His father passed away while his mother is still pregnant and he died. So Rasulullah did not see his father. He born as an orphan. And at that time, his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, took the responsibility to take care of Amina, his daughter-in-law to take care, to provide food, to provide drink, and to give her all the, the means to survive. And at that time, the time is passing, day after day, and his grandfather is thrilling to see the child, to see the baby, to see the offspring of Abdullah, the one who is not more, no longer there. And وَفِي لَيْلَةٍ صَفَتْ سَمَاؤُهَا وَرَقَّ مَاؤُهَا وَقَابَ هَوَاؤُهَا وَهَدَأَ طَيْرُهَا فِي لَيْلَةٍ 
اتصل فيها نور السماء بارض الصحراء تجلى مولد الهادي تجلى مولد الهادي وعمت بشائره البوادي والقصابه واسدت للبريه بنت وهب يدا بيضاء طوقت الرقابه لقد ولدته وهاب منيرا كما تلد السماوات الشهابا فقام على سماء البيت نورا يضيء جبال مكه والنقابا وضاعت يثرب الفيحاء مسكا وفاح القاع ارجاء وطابا بك بشر الله السماء فزينت وتضوعت مسكا بك الغبراء ابا الزهراء قد جاوزت قدري بمدحك بيد ان لي انتسابا فما عرف البلاغه ذو بيان اذا لم يتخذك له كتابا In a certain night, the night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had willed that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going to be born. At that night, Amina, the mother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidatu Amina, she felt that she is about to deliver the baby. And that is why she sent somebody with the news to Abdul Muttalib, his grandfather. And they sent for a certain woman to help her in the delivery. Her name is Ashifa Umm Abdul Rahman. She came and she started the procedures until the time came and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to the dunya. He came to the existence, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ولد الهدى ولد الهدى فالكائنات ضياء وفم الزمان تبسم وثناء الروح والملأ الملائك حوله للدين والدنيا به بشراء. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم came to the light. And the first remarkable incident happened that there was a, a slave lady owned to his uncle, Abu Lahab. At that time, she rushed to nurse feed the baby. And it was a sign that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to, in, to teach the dunya the humbleness, the humility. Allah had willed for him to be an orphan, to take the, the first sip of, of the milk from a slave lady. And the third incident happened that when she, that lady, rushed to her master at that time, Abu Lahab, and she delivered the news. Congratulations. Amina had delivered the baby. You know what he said? He said because he was happy at that time, he said, go, you are free. And it was a sign that Rasulullah his existence is a sign to free the slaves. And at that time, his father, his, his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib came and carried the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In a certain narration, his mother Amina said, لَمَّا وَضَعْتُ مُحَمَّدًا فَتَحَ فَمَهُ فَوَجَدْتُ كَأَنَّ نُورًا خَرَجَ مِنْهُ أَضَاءَ لِيَ قُصُورَ مَكَّةَ وَالشَّامِ when he just opened his mouth, I thought there is a, a light came out of him, enlightened the palaces and the mountains in Syria and the whole area of Isham. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is just born, but all the indications 
generations and all generations came with the barakah, the blessings of the house in the house of Abdul Muttalib by the presence of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And once the grandfather carried the baby, they asked him, what is the name that you wanted to give the baby? He said, Muhammad. And that name, no one knew before. And it seems like Allah hid that name long time for anyone to be called that name except to be Rasulullah. He said, I name him Muhammad. And they said, why? Because, he said, because Muhammad is the praised one. I wanted him to be praised in the dunya and I wanted him to be praised in the heavens. That is the name of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And let me pause here a little bit. Just by very easy and simple researches that you can do. In 2022, what is the most famous and the common name on the first, on the face of the earth? You will find Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anywhere, just say Muhammad and they will know what, whom you are talking about. And not only this, Allah had promised Rasulullah as you memorize, Surah Al-Shah, Alam Nashrah Laka Sadra, Wa Wada'na Anka Wizra, Alladhi Anqad Wahra, and then what? Wa Rafa'na Laka Dhikra, and we had raised your status. We had elevated your status and your name, O Muhammad, not a single minute can pass without mentioning the name of Rasulullah in a certain place on this planet. Not a certain, not a certain second, except you have a Muhammad will say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, and has to follow this by Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Not a single second that you accept that you will find a person who is praying and saying in tashahud, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. That is Rasulullah Muhammad. He named him Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the grandfather started to take care of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is the incident that we should learn and we should teach our children and revive the seerah of Rasulullah in our houses. That's why. If you wanted to do a favor for yourself, for your household, for your family members, I call you, I invite you to bring them together tonight, tomorrow, after tomorrow, whatever is convenient to you. Call them and talk to them in a gathering. Who is Rasulullah? Who is our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Teach them his name, his family. Tell them who is Amina bin Tuwah, who is Abdullah ibn Abd al-Muttalib, who is Thuwayba, who is Ashifa, who is Halima. And I will tell you a little bit who is Halima. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our worship. Allahumma ameen. Kulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah aliyya al-azim ayyuhu al-azim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafah.
صلاة وسلاما على النبي المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم جعلت حياتك للزمان بشيرا ومشى بشيرك في النهار مزيعا الله أكبر حين بشر قائلا وهب الإله إلى الأنام شفيعا يا رسول الله لو أن إنسانا تخير ملة ما اختار إلا دينك الشرفاء المصلحون أصابع جمعت يدا هي أنت بل أنت اليد البيضاء زادتك في الخلق العظيم شمائل يغرى بهن ويولع الكرماء فإذا رحمت فأنت أب أو أم هذان في الدنيا هما الرحماء وإذا غضبت فإنما هي فطبة للحق لا ضغل ولا شحناء وإذا خطبت يا سيدي فللمنابر هزة تعلو الندية وللقلوب بكاء يا من يا من له عز الشفاعة وحده وهو المقرب ما له شفعاء عرش القيامة عرش القيامة عرش القيامة أنت تحت لوائه والحوض أنت حياله السقاء اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليك سيدي يا رسول الله It was a custom during the time of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to send the little babies the, the little children to our place in the Bedouin places so they can learn the values, ethics, the language, to be eloquent, to get the grammar, how to talk, to get the 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 the, the, the manners and the principles and the teachings of the educate all of that you could learn from the Bedouins to get the traditions, the customs. That is why they wanted to send Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be to be nurse fed and suckled in the the Bedouin area. And the females, the ladies, used to come to pick up the children to get them and to nurse feed them in a, with a compensation, with money. They came to the place of Mecca to pick up the kids. And all the ladies went and they were searching for the babies who had families and their fathers are alive. So they guarantee they will get, they get the money and they will get lots of money. As Sayyida Halima came from that place with her group, but she had a problem with her mule. It was sick, cannot walk properly. That's why she came late. And when she entered Mecca, at that time, she found all ladies, took all the children who had rich families. And she did not find anyone except the Prophet Muhammad And she asked, that's why I told you, that's why I told you at the beginning, the whole, the main theme of this khutbah, how the destiny of Allah works. She didn't find anyone. She felt sad. And some of her friends started to make fun of her. You will go empty handed, you will find nothing. She said, can I find anyone other than that orphan so I can guarantee that I will get the money? And Allah wanted the absolute happiness for Halima, but she didn't know. She didn't know that after 14 centuries, we are here in the United States, in Florida, we are talking about Halima. No one remembers any of her groups. No one remembers any of her friends. They were making fun of her. But this is Halima because she chose Rasulullah. Sallallahu 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she narrated, once she entered to Amina to take the Prophet Muhammad, she said at that time, I didn't have too much milk. Like I, I wasn't fed in a proper way. And she said, once I got him between my two arms, I felt the, the nourishment. I felt that it is filled with milk. And the mule was sick. And she said, once I put him on the mule, it became so energetic, so active, jumping and hurrying up. Even like her friends said, Ya Halima, it seems like you have something strange in, in your mule. Now, when we, we, when we were coming, you, you came late, and now you became the fastest. What happened? And she said, my area was suffering from the loss of the food and the crops. Once I entered with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we started to get all the goodness, all the khair, all the barakah. And day after day, week after week, she became in a good condition. Her husband, his nickname or his title is called Abu Kapsha. One day came to her and he said, Ya Halima, I see that, uh, that oh Allah, we have taken a blessed child. She said, E Allah. Yes, of course, I swear by Allah that we have a blessed child. That is Rasulullah. This is his biography, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even if he was a child. And I am sure that if we had more time, I would tell you more and more that might surprise you about Milad al Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But again, let me go back to the main point. I want you to go now and leave the masjid with the full confidence and trust in the destiny of Allah. إنه لا يخشى من كان له أب فكيف يخشى من كان له رب You do not fear with, you do not fear or feel any worry, any anxiety if you have a father supporting you. So what about if you have Allah to support you? So what should you feel? This is the destiny of Allah. If Abdullah was slaughtered, we do not know what is going to happen. If Halima came early, she might take somebody else other than Rasulullah, and we wouldn't mention Halima. If Abu Lahab did not make a favor by doing free the slave lady, we wouldn't mention him in that good spot. But in other spot, we recite Tabbat Yada, Abi Lahab, This is the destiny of Allah. Whatever happens to you, I just wanted you to keep one statement on your tongue. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. It happens for a reason. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless us all, Allahumma ameen. May Allah protect our families and our wives, our children, Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the intercession of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah gather us all with him in Jannah al Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast on his way, on his sunnah, till we meet him on the day of judgment. Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbul alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the iman to be good representatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ghafir lana dhunubana wa israfana bi amrina.
واشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا انك على كل شيء قدير واقم الصلاه قوموا الى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله